Hey everyone, Shika here with Narg Dojo where we talk about narcissism, spirituality, and raising your awareness. In today's video, we're going to delve some more into the diagnostic criteria for narcissistic personality disorder and different narcissistic traits. From a clinical perspective, NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, is categorized under the various cluster B personality disorders. You'll also find antisocial personality disorder, ASPD, that which you may know as sociopathy and psychopathy. There's also borderline BPD and histrionic personality disorder, HPD. For this video, we're going to take a look at the diagnostic criteria for NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, and also ASPD. Now, the bulk of what we really discuss here would be classified as narcopathy or narcissistic sociopaths. You may also hear this being called malignant narcissists. So at an energetic level, at a level of consciousness, the further down you descend, the further you are going away from your true self or your true spirit. So narcopathy would be the energy spectrum here. So it's NPD and it kind of overlaps with what the clinical community is calling antisocial personality disorder. So let's go ahead and jump into the diagnostic criteria for NPD. What we are looking at here is section 301.81 of the DSM version 5. So you can see where people with NPD have a pervasive pattern of grandiosity. This is their delusionary behavior. They also have an excessive need for admiration, and this is paired with a lack of empathy. Now, in order for someone to be clinically diagnosed with NPD by a psychotherapist or a psychologist, they would have to have five or more of these nine traits. Now, people, I want you to take a very good look at this list. And think about the narcissist in your life, and this could be a narcissistic parent, a narcissistic partner, intimate partner, business partner, could be a narcissistic boss, co-worker, sibling, etc. The clinicians need five or more to diagnose someone with NPD, but if you really look at this list, someone with one or even two traits is going to be a very toxic person. When we look at the spirit or the energy that is behind pathological narcissism, we can see where these people are based in shame and they can't move past their pride. So what you're dealing with is a type of arrested development. And we are talking about arrested development on the spiritual, emotional, and psychological plane. What clinicians call the personality, because NPD is classified as a personality disorder, is the area of the soul and the soul is comprised of the mind the will and the emotions when you understand that human beings are multi-dimensional in nature narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder is going to make a lot more sense who am i poor you well we are spirits inside of a human body with the access to a mind as a tool your mind is a tool you're not your mind your body is a vessel you're not your body there are different names for spirit depending on the culture that you come from. So you could call the source, source energy, your light, inner light, the observer, essence, prana, chi, and so on. Clinicians, such as psychologists and psychotherapists, are good at observing phenomena in the physical realm. And then they attribute those illnesses to the area of the mind. Most clinicians do not study the area behind the mind, which is the spirit, and your spirit is your source. You are source energy. When we create, we create from the non-physical to the physical, meaning you, the spirit, use your mind to generate ideas and then you act that out in the physical realm through your body. The clinical view of narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder is actually backwards. They look from the physical to the non-physical. If we take a trip down memory lane, we'll see where narcissists abandon themselves in childhood. And we're talking about the true spirit. Abandoning the self is a disconnection from mind. So we could say that this person is losing their mind or they are going insane. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. People with NPD are stuck in a shame, blame, rage cycle. 
Now you are experiencing this shame, blame, rage cycle as narcissistic abuse. Narcissistic abuse is a cycle. This is their pathology. It is a patterned behavior. So they always idealize or love bomb, then devalue and discard their victims just to drag them back in this abusive cycle. Narcissists exist in victim abuser consciousness. This is the area again from shame up to pride. We can also call this the third dimension. So what we really are looking at here are people that did not develop past their lower ego. So the spiritual first, second, and third dimension also coincide with ego level development levels one, two, and three. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So when we look at the stages of development one, two, and three, that is below, we'll see we're at rest. Again, they're at rest at level one. You're going to get control, greed, and manipulation from the narcissist. One level up from that, you're seeing that blame, rage, jealousy, and revenge. And on a really good day, then you're going to get that narcissistic pride and arrogance because they really don't believe that anything is wrong with their behavior. You're not going to get any of these higher level faculties when it comes to narcissists. They are not applicable. So you're not going to get accountability and trust and honesty. You're not going to get collaboration and empathy. It does not exist. And you definitely are not going to get forgiveness and compassion. They do not have it to give to you. So when you think about how narcissists get into relationships with people, they manipulate. And when we look at the narcissistic abuse cycle, idealization or love bombing is a manipulation strategy. Narcissists do not have love to give. They do not have access to it. Narcissists are shame-based people running from their shame. And the shame that we're talking about here is pathologically low self-esteem. Self-esteem so low that they'll probably have to look up to see it. It is very important to understand the difference between shame and guilt because shame is felt about the self. So narcissists are people that do not love themselves. And people that do not love themselves are not able to love others. And because they have no love, then they will abuse. The only relationship that you'll have with a pathological narcissist is a victim-abuser type relationship. They are low on empathy because they are high on apathy. Let's go ahead and delve deeper into this and talk about the antisocials. Antisocial personality disorder, ASPD. Narcopathy, again, is that spectrum of energy that borders on NPD and ASPD, that which we know as sociopathy and psychopathy. If we take a look at the diagnostic criteria for antisocial personality disorder, you will see where there is a pervasive pattern of disregard for and the violation of others' rights occurring since the age of 15. And to get diagnosed with ASPD, they would have to have three or more of these traits here. So take a look at this here. Think about the narcissist in your life, pathological narcissist, toxic person. How many of these traits do they have? Now, whether the person that you were with was diagnosed or not, toxic behavior is toxic and should not be tolerated. If you're dealing with a pathological narcissist, you're dealing with someone with a compromised consciousness. Their conscience is seared. And what I mean by that is they're tapped into their lower nature. They are listening to the voices in their heads telling them to harm people. They are not listening to their higher nature. They do not really have much higher awareness. You are dealing with people that have accepted an evil spirit. They have accepted darkness into their souls. So you cannot love a demon and a demon cannot love you back. Demons are programmed to lie, kill, steal, and destroy. Narcissists are in hell and misery loves company. So they are going to have to drag you down to their level. They are already being tormented. This is spiritual warfare. You avoid narcissists by staying out of the third dimension. This means you have to get the courage to walk away and stay away. If you hover too close to the third dimension, they are going to clip your wings. If you appreciate the content, please give us a like, share, and subscribe, and comment. Let us know what you think.